Hey, what's up guys, it's Tech Infusion, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make this modern text opener animation in After Effects. Let's jump right in. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is create a new composition. I'm just going to name my composition main comp. Set the resolution and frame rate to whatever you need, and then you can leave the background color black. Then just press okay. Now let's create another composition, and I'm going to name this one text. Again, just set the resolution and frame rate to whatever you need and press OK. Now let's grab our text tool and start to type out the text that we want as our main bold text for this opener. I'm just going to type opener. Then go ahead and format and style the text to whatever looks good to you. And then make sure you center it with the align window and then also move the anchor point to the middle. All right, now that you have your text good to go, go back to your main composition and drag that text composition into that main comp. Now we're going to go ahead and enable the rulers by pressing Control or Command R on your keyboard, or you can come up to View and click on Show Rulers. Now if you take your mouse and click and drag down from this top ruler, it will create a guide for you. And we're just going to drag this right into the middle of our composition. You can zoom in if you need to to get a more precise look at exactly where the center is. Alright, now we want to go back up to View and click on Lock Guides, just so we don't accidentally move that center mark later. And then we can also disable the rulers so we don't take up all that screen real estate. All right, just make sure that you're not selected on any layer by clicking in anywhere in this blank space in your timeline panel. And then we're going to go up and grab our rectangle tool so that we can begin drawing a mat. So the goal here is to separate our text into a top half and a bottom half so that we can animate them separately. Let's go ahead and set our stroke to zero and then make sure your fill is white. Now I'm going to draw a rectangle till it just about hits this half line right here. And because we have this guide here, it'll actually snap to the middle point, which is super helpful. Once you have your rectangle, make sure that you align it to the center. I'm going to rename this shape layer to top mat. Now we want to set a track mat up on our text composition layer, and then we could just select this alpha channel for this top mat shape we just drew. If you don't see this track mat section, you can come down to this button right here that says toggle switches and modes, and that'll toggle between your switches like motion blur. But in this case, we want to see our blending modes and track mat. Okay, now you see that we have just the top half of the text, and that's exactly what we want. So now select both of these layers in our main composition, right click on them and click on pre-compose. I'm just going to name this composition top. Go to your project window in the top left here, select top and copy and paste it to make a duplicate composition. I'm just going to name this duplicated copy bottom. All right, go ahead and select that bottom composition and drag it down into your main composition. Now double click this composition right here so that you can enter it and go in to edit it. I'm just going to move this mat layer down and then I'm going to rename that layer to bottom mat. Now when I go back to my main composition, you'll see that I have both the top half and the bottom half of my text. Perfect. All right, now let's go back into the top composition. You can do this by just double clicking on it. Now I'm gonna select this top mat layer right here and just press P on my keyboard to open up the position parameters. Let's go about one second into the timeline here and then I'm going to click on this stopwatch icon next to position to create a keyframe where my playhead is at. Now let's go back to the beginning of the timeline, and then I'm going to move this mat up just till it about clears the top of the text. You don't need to worry about creating a keyframe because it will create one for you as soon as you make an adjustment to that position parameter. All right, now I'm going to select both of these keyframes that we just created and easy ease them by pressing F9 on my keyboard. Now with both of the keyframes selected, click on this little icon right here to get into the graph editor. Right click in the graph editor window and make sure that you select edit speed graph as the graph type. If your graph doesn't look exactly like mine, it's probably because you're on edit value graph instead of speed graph. All right, now let's just click on this right keyframe right here and just drag this handle all the way to the left until it stops. Now we can go ahead and close out of the graph editor using that same icon. And let's just play it through. That looks pretty good. Now let's go to our bottom composition and do the exact same thing, but move the mat down instead of up this time. I'm just going to make sure my mat layer is selected, press P on my keyboard, go to about one second in my timeline, press that stopwatch to create a keyframe, go back to the beginning of my timeline, and then move that mat down just till it clears the text. Make sure both of the keyframes are easy eased with F9, and then go into the graph editor and drag that right keyframe handle all the way to the left. Let's go back to our main comp and preview what we have so far. Now it's time to create another text layer, kind of that would act as our subtitle here. Let's use our text tool, and then we can start typing whatever we want in the middle of our text. I can already tell that's way too big, so I'm going to go ahead and style it and size it the way I need it to be. 
make sure that you align this text to the center and then go ahead and center up the anchor point as well. I'm just gonna increase the tracking just a little bit to kind of widen out that middle text. I think that looks pretty good right about there. All right, now let's select both the top and bottom compositions and press P on our keyboard for position. I'm just gonna go forward in my timeline and then we can click on the stopwatch icons for both of these layers to create two keyframes, one on each layer. All right, from here, I'm gonna go about another second forward on my timeline and then I'm gonna move the top composition up and the bottom composition down a little bit. And as I'm doing it, you'll kind of get an idea for what I'm going for here. Next, we're gonna to wanna to create a new rectangle similar to our mat that we created earlier, but this time it's gonna be a mat for the center text. Go ahead and click on the rectangle tool and draw a kind of rectangular mat to cover the center text. Go ahead and center that rectangle and rename that layer to mat. All right, now on your subtitle text layer, I'm just gonna select this track mat dropdown and then let's select this alpha channel for this mat shape we just drew. Now let's go back up to that mat shape layer and press S on your keyboard to open up the scale properties. Click on this little chain icon to unlink these two parameters so that you can scale the width independently from the height. Now I'm gonna click on this stopwatch icon to create a scale keyframe right where my playhead is at and it should be lining up with the other keyframes that you had at the end. Now let's go back to one minute and 10 frames where our other two keyframes are living and let's change the height scale to 0%. I'm going to select all of these keyframes and press F9 on my keyboard to easy ease them all. Once they're all easy eased, go into the graph editor using that same icon. I'm gonna select all the keyframes on the right here and then drag these little yellow handles all the way to the left. Now let's also move the left keyframes. I'm just gonna move the handle right around here. Keep in mind when you're in the graph editor editing multiple keyframes, you may have multiple yellow handles, so make sure that you move them all together in the same location. All right, let's close out of the graph editor now and play it back. I'm gonna select these two keyframes up on my matte shape layer and actually move them forward about one frame. It kind of gives it some dynamics so that they don't all move exactly at the same time. All right, now we can add some color to our text and you can really do whatever you want here, but I'm just gonna use the fill effect to change the color of the word opener. I'm gonna leave text animation as white, but again, you can change the color to whatever you want. Once you have the color that you want for the top half of the text, you can just go ahead and copy that fill effect and then paste it on the bottom layer as well. Now I'm going to create the line that kind of goes around the entire opener. Make sure that you have all your layers deselected and then click on the pen tool. I'm gonna set the stroke to 30 and then make sure that your stroke is whatever color that you want that line to be. I'm just gonna leave mine as white. And then also you wanna make sure that your fill is turned off. You can do that by just clicking on the word fill and then pressing this little icon right here. Now, when you're drawing this line around the top half of your text, make sure that you're holding shift so that all your lines are gonna be straight. Once you have something that looks kinda like this, just go ahead and align it to the center and make sure that the anchor point is also in the center. Now, drop down the properties of this new shape path that you just drew, and then we're gonna select this little add button right here that will allow us to add the trim paths effect. So just find that in that list and click on it. Let's go to one second in our timeline. Now expand the trim path properties so that you can edit and add keyframes. Click on the stopwatch next to end to create our first keyframe. And now move your playhead back to the very beginning of your timeline and then change the percentage of end to zero. Now you see when I play it back, the line will slowly reveal itself over time. Now I'm just gonna select both of these trim paths keyframes, easy ease them, go to the graph editor and kind of do the same type of thing we've been doing with the curve so far. Now let's go ahead and pre-compose this line layer and I'm just gonna name it stroke. Go ahead and press Control or Command D on your keyboard to duplicate that layer in our timeline. So now we have two stroke layers. Press R on your keyboard to open up the rotation parameter and go ahead and rotate this one 180 degrees. Now select the top and bottom composition and press U on the keyboard to reveal all the keyframes for that layer. Make sure that your playhead is lined up with that first set of keyframes and then select both the stroke layers and press P on your keyboard to open up the position parameters. Now click on the stopwatch next to position and it will create two keyframes on the stroke layers. Move your playhead to that second set of keyframes on the top and bottom layers and then adjust the position parameters on each stroke layer to kind of move with the text. Something kind of like that. Now select all those keyframes on your stroke layers, press F9 to easy ease them, and then open up the graph editor and kind of do something similar that we did with the middle subtitle text and kind of move the right handles in all the way and move the left keyframe handles in part of the way. 
All right, now let's go ahead and grab all the keyframes on our stroke layers and just move them forward about two to three frames. What this will do is add even more dynamics to kind of make it feel like a reactive chain. Let's go ahead and play it back now to see how it looks. From here, you could add a background layer to spice things up a bit, or even add more motion graphic elements to kind of enhance the whole look. But that's pretty much all for this video. That's how you create this modern text opener in After Effects. If you found this video helpful, please remember to leave a like, and don't forget to comment, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss more videos like this. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and until next time, guys, peace out.